Welcome to the China Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Videos show how Hamas achieved its unprecedented surprise attack on Israel. There were terrorists inside, an Israeli recounts how militants invaded his village. I don't care, Chinese tourists in Japan enjoy eating sushi amid Beijing's ban. Analysis, in striking Israel, Hamas also took aim at Middle East security realignment. Melbourne container terminal buys two cranes from Shanghai Jenhua Heavy Industries. Videos show how Hamas achieved its unprecedented surprise attack on Israel. Washington Post. Palestinian troops have breached the Gaza border, killing and capturing Israeli soldiers and civilians in a surprise attack on Israeli military installations. At least 250 people in Israel were killed, with over 1,000 injured, following the attack by Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. The groups also launched over 3,000 rockets, according to the Israeli Defense Force. There were terrorists inside, an Israeli recounts how militants invaded his village. New York Times On Saturday, Palestinian militants infiltrated an Israeli village near the Gaza Strip. Amir Tibon, a resident of Kibbutz Nahal Aounce, described the terrifying experience of hearing gunfire and knowing that terrorists were just outside his window. T-Bond's parents, who live in Tel Aviv, managed to rescue him and his family from the chaos. I don't care, Chinese tourists in Japan enjoy eating sushi amid Beijing's ban. South China Morning Post Chinese holidaymakers visiting Japan during China's National Day holiday period have expressed their enjoyment of eating sushi, despite Beijing's ban on Japanese seafood imports. The ban was imposed following the release of treated radioactive water from the Fukushima nuclear complex into the sea. Chinese tourists in Japan have said that they are not worried about the water discharge, stating that they understand that the concentration level of tritium in the treated water is below international safety standards and has limited effect. Chinese media had reported on trip cancellations to Japan and concerns about the safety of Japanese products following the water release. However, it appears that young Chinese tourists with flexible ways of thinking are still choosing to travel independently to Japan. Japan remains a popular overseas destination for Chinese travelers during the holiday period. Analysis, in striking Israel, Hamas also took aim at Middle East security realignment. Reuters. The recent attack by Hamas on Israel is seen as not only a response to the violence taking place in the Israeli-occupied West Bank but also as a message to Saudi Arabia and the US. The attack, which killed 250 Israelis and led to more than 250 Palestinian deaths in Israel's response, highlights the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine and the ambitions of both Iran and Saudi Arabia in the region. The attack comes at a time when the US is pushing Saudi Arabia towards normalizing ties with Israel as part of a defense deal between the US and Saudi Arabia. This move could threaten Palestinian aspirations for statehood and the ambitions of Iran, Hamas' main backer. Hamas leader, Ismail Haniyeh, stated that all the agreements of normalization that you, Arab states, signed with, Israel, will not end this conflict. The attack also follows rising violence in the Israeli-occupied West Bank and a sense of irrelevance felt by Hamas as efforts advance towards broader Israeli-Arab relations. Melbourne Container Terminal buys two cranes from Shanghai Jenhua Heavy Industries. South China Morning Post. Victoria International Container Terminal, VICT, in Melbourne has purchased two automated ship-to-shore cranes from Chinese manufacturer Shanghai Jenhua Heavy Industries. The cranes will enable the terminal to handle larger trade vessels and are part of VICT's expansion project, which will increase its capacity to 1.25 million 20-foot equivalent units. The cranes have a lift height of 49 meters and a 60-meter outreach, allowing them to handle 22 containers across a vessel. China reiterates two-state solution needed for Israel, Palestine. Bloomberg China has called for a ceasefire between Israel and Palestine following the recent escalation of violence. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson stated that the long-term stagnation of the peace process is unsustainable and reiterated support for an independent Palestinian state. 
China has been increasingly vocal on Israeli-Palestinian issues as it looks to raise its presence in the Middle East. Asia Council says North Korea flag dispute with WADA is unresolved. Reuters. The Olympic Council of Asia, OCA, is attempting to resolve the issue of North Korea being allowed to display its flag at the Hangzhou Asian Games despite being banned over non-compliance with anti-doping rules. The World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, banned the flag at all major sporting events, excluding the Olympics and Paralympics, after determining that North Korea had not implemented an effective testing program. The OCA has been criticized for failing to enforce the ban. The OCA is in contact with WADA and hopes to reach a resolution that is acceptable to both parties. North Korea won 11 gold medals at the Asian Games. The country was suspended from the International Olympic Committee until the end of 2022 due to its failure to send a team to the Tokyo Summer Olympics. North Korea to let doping officials back in for testing. Japan Times. North Korea has agreed to allow drug testing officials back into the country, according to the Olympic Council of Asia. This comes after the World Anti-Doping Agency declared North Korea's national anti-doping body non-compliant due to its inability to allow testers into the country. North Korea has been largely closed off from the outside world since early 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Six Dimensions. Today, we covered a range of news stories from around the world. First, we saw the devastating surprise attack by Hamas on Israel, which not only highlighted the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine but also had implications for Middle East security realignment. The attack may have been a message to Saudi Arabia and the US, as they push for normalizing ties with Israel, potentially threatening Palestinian aspirations for statehood and the ambitions of Iran. In other news, Chinese tourists in Japan enjoyed eating sushi despite Beijing's ban on Japanese seafood imports. It seems that young Chinese tourists with flexible ways of thinking are still choosing to travel independently to Japan, despite concerns about the safety of Japanese products. Japan remains a popular destination for Chinese travelers during the holiday period. Moving on, Victoria International Container Terminal in Melbourne has purchased two automated ship-to-shore cranes from a Chinese manufacturer, enabling them to handle larger trade vessels. This expansion project will increase their capacity and improve efficiency. China has called for a ceasefire between Israel and Palestine, emphasizing the need for a two-state solution. China has been increasingly vocal on Israeli-Palestinian issues as it seeks to raise its presence in the Middle East. The Olympic Council of Asia is attempting to resolve the dispute between North Korea and the World Anti-Doping Agency over the display of North Korea's flag at the Hangzhou Asian Games. North Korea's failure to comply with anti-doping rules led to a ban on displaying their flag at major sporting events. The OCA is in contact with WADA to find a resolution. Lastly, North Korea has agreed to allow drug testing officials back into the country after being declared non-compliant by the World Anti-Doping Agency. This comes after North Korea's isolation due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That's all for today's news. Now, I want to hear from you, my esteemed audience. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any questions or opinions? The Six Dimensions is all about engaging with different perspectives, so don't hesitate to join the discussion. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO brief via email.